Welcome to another episode of Confessions of a Serial Seller. My guest today is joining us all the way from Connecticut, which is about 45 kilometers away from New York, I have just learned. She's a branding expert, identity strategist. And today we're going to be talking about how important branding is in the world of sales. It's Jane Cavalier, thank you for joining me today. It's a pleasure to be here. Awesome. So I always like to start these by just getting an understanding of your background. What led you to be a branding guru? Um, and then I want to dive into, I want to talk a little bit about your book, but I also want to dive into the, the sort of the crossover between brand and sales and, and if there is such a crossover. So tell me a bit about how you, you got into the world of branding. Well, Tony, and I really started in the advertising uh, world. I wouldn't say in the age of Mad Men, but maybe in the tip of the age of Mad Men. And um, what led me to the advertising world is I was, I've always been interested in the power of art to sway people. How people are swayed by ideas and indirect thoughts. And because I think most decisions are, are really made from an emotional basis. Yeah. So when I got into the advertising world, I found that to be true. And the best practices in advertising led me to really understand and learn how to make an emotionally charged pitch and to use concepts to sway people and influence people. But then as, as I got more and more into it, um, a lot of advertising, this would be great for our selling conversation, mm. uh, borders on just, you know, selling or just being selling in a clever way versus branding. Mm. And I really got more interested in branding, which is sort of setting a context, mm. using a concept to set a context. Snickers is not, you know, a candy bar. It's about energy. Oh. Yes. Well, that's different, right? Yes. Gatorade is not a sugary drink. It's a sports drink. And yes. Like, okay. Yes. So those were the things that got me into branding because I really felt that those identities and those contexts gave a product or a corporation mm. meaning, a deeper mm. meaning in mm. someone's life beyond just functions and features. Mm. So I spent a good, the first half of my career on Madison mm. Avenue. I worked at large wow. advertising agencies. I read, I, I led strategic planning for McCann Erickson worldwide. I worked on very big clients like Exxon Mobil and Samsung and Johnson and Johnson. Uh, I, I ran a creative boutique where we we made Snapple mainstream, literally uh, Brilliant. visible for ten years with made from the best stuff on earth. So I've had kind of a smattering, and then I went into my own brand consulting agency because I wanted to do branding without advertising. A lot of companies mm. aren't going to have advertising budgets. Yep. I also had government agencies and nonprofits who weren't advertising but needed mm. a brand. And mm. that's what led me into uh, really just a focus on branding. Love that. And I never looked at it like that. You're, you're so right when you say, and, and am I right in saying Loop is a sport enhancement drink? Is that is the identity the sport enhancement? I've, I've never looked at it like that. It's really clever. It's a really clever way to look at it, but it, it absolutely rings true. In your opinion, which brand do you feel has best influenced or most influenced buyers? Which, I'm sorry, Tony, what do you mean which brand? Uh, so which brand to you, you said earlier, you've been fascinated with the art of, of how a brand can influence buying decisions. Yeah. So I, I guess my question is, which one do you think does it best? You know, I could give you a lot of examples, but I'll give you an example in healthcare because this is a global example. Yeah. And a lot of people are aware of the Johnson and Johnson brand. Yeah. By the way, that brand, that actual name, really only exists on consumer products, which for many years didn't make money. Cotton balls, yeah. swabs. Yeah. But it is also the name associated with, frankly, one of the world's largest pharmaceutical companies. But it's never been called a pharmaceutical company. Mm. It's always been called a healthcare company. Mm. And that brand name, which exists on consumer products, and that brand is about trust. Yeah. And very often used the symbol of the relationship between a mother and child. Yes. Because that is a universal, a, to the end of time, unconditional trust relationship mm. ever that anyone can relate to. Mm. And so building mm. that, uh, and these also, that brand name is used on products that touch a baby for as soon as it gets into the world, like baby powder. Yes. 
Yes. And that name is associated with antipsychotic drugs like 50 years later. It's a very sophisticated branding strategy. Mm. The brand is rolled out to launch a product when you need trust. That brand is launched out in a crisis mm. when other mm. brands underneath it. It's a multi brand model. Um, but that's an example of that. An another one that maybe I also is very accessible for people. I give this example all the time. When computers first launched, IBM said they were called. They were about productivity and processing power. They were called workstations. Yeah, yeah. And Apple came in and said, it's not about pro productivity and work. It's about creativity. Mm. Processing power mm. that is going to unleash your creativity. Mm. Very useful. No matter what you're going to be doing, you're going to be doing things you never imagined. A very different framing mm. of the exact same product. The last example I'll give you mm. in terms of how brands give products meaning, take a, a, a commodity product like an anti-lock braking system. Yeah. You can put an anti-lock braking system into a BMW and it is a breakthrough in performance because that brand is about performance. Now I can put an anti-lock braking system in the Volvo, which is about safety. Mm. It's a breakthrough in safety. Mm, wow, it's the same product but a completely different benefit, I guess. Yeah, the context of why you should value yeah. it is different. That's, that's so fascinating, because I, I, in sales, a lot of sales people talk about Fab 7, features, advances, benefits, and I think they struggle sometimes to articulate that effectively. But also, I think the way you've done it, using examples of well-known brands that everyone can relate to, to help you maybe say that into a story when we talk about our products and services. It's really interesting. So tell me what I really want to know and understand is how important is about the brand or should we say personal branding when it comes to sales success? You know, and I, I love this and I'm, that's why I really wanted to be on your show because a lot of salespeople, and I love salespeople because sales and marketing are two sides of the same coin, really. Yes. We're all trying yes. to sell, but we're just trying to do it differently. And the salesperson has a very challenging job because they're on the line and they, yep. have to close the, they have to close the deal. And a lot of what a brand should do is open the door. Yes. Predispose and make closing that deal easier because we've got an emotional predisposition. Yeah. Stick around longer. Remember, you know, the brand is there when you're not. Yes. Right. Yes. That's right. a good way to look at door. it. When you walk out the door, the brand is still there. And so, you know, I think good salespeople will tell you they value a great brand, but most people just don't have one. Mm. And so they're mm. going out just selling features and trying to differentiate mm. without what we call a brand, you know, overhead, if you will, or brand surrounding them. And it really makes a difference. I'll give you an example that might help add some color to this. So let's say you're in an, a pest exterminator business. You're, yep. you're driving a truck and you're, you're selling a product which gets rid of annoying things like mosquitoes and ticks. And you're saying, hey, I'm number one. Everybody says they're number one. And we're the best and we're safe. But you really, really get to understand the customer that you're serving, which is the essence of branding. And what mm -hmm. does it really mean to them? Mm -hmm. Then you see a person in your same business drive by and on their truck yeah. it says, it's safe to play outside again. Call me. It's safe for your kids to play outside again. Call That's me. really cow. So the person who says it's safe for me to have, okay, I'm calling that person because they understand, yeah. they understand what I'm really talking about here. Uh, yeah. That's fascinating. I love that. That's very clever. Yeah. And it's also, you see that safe to play outside is emotionally charged, right? Yeah. Making the decision in many cases, it's a mother. Yeah, and it's, yep. many cases it's related to exactly that situation. So for salespeople who don't have a marketing department or don't have a branding expert and trying to solve this on their own, part of it is to try to really focus on ultimately what is the end goal that your customer is trying to achieve. And I don't mean, oh, they're trying to get promoted or yeah, you know, trying to I'm talking about for that company. So what about that? I want to give an example here. So let's say you're a real estate company. In the UK, we call them estate agents. I think in America, you call it real estate. And because something you said is think about the audience. So if you're communicating, let's say the mother, the female is the main buyer, you want to communicate what's important to her, which will be their children. 
the same for a father, but you know what I mean. There's the mother and child bond. What if the decision maker is a mother and a father? So you now have to appeal to both decision makers. How do you know as a salesperson which to highlight, which feature or benefit as part of your brand to raise and bring up if you're two totally different decision makers? Well, I always love it when it comes to couples. And in most cases, men cater to the women. Yeah. Particularly when it comes to the situation of the home, family, but because nobody wants an unhappy wife. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Happy wife, happy life. I get there that. There you have it. There you have it. I get so, that. So um so it's it's interesting because this is one of the problems that the financial services industry got itself into because mm. it always catered to men. Yeah. And then and then as soon as the man passed away within the year, something like 80% of women switched financial advisors. Wow, really? Wow. No relationship with the woman. And in the past, uh, I think it's the past six years, women now control a majority of wealth in the world. That's insane. Because what a of, shift. Yeah, a shift because men have died and more women are mm. living longer. And all of a sudden, all the financial services industry yeah. don't have a relationship with women. Wow. So they're going to have to completely change their branding and identity. They've been struggling with that and trying to figure out how to do it. So, But that's just a sidebar. So back to this, I would say that you're absolutely talking to both, but yeah. you're talking to the dreams and aspirations of the woman. Yeah, yeah, I get that. And I, to be honest with you, when I'm as a trainer and a coach, I say that and I say, look, without being sexist, it's normally the woman that will make decisions. Therefore, whether the husband says it's him, focus on the lady. So I want to just tap into personal brand. So people use a good example of Virgin. They, they say, you know, everyone's heard of Virgin, but the followers, the influence is Richard Branson, not Virgin. So why, why is that? Why is, because to me, that's what personal brand is. Richard Branson has a personal brand, a bit like, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk. Most people don't know Gary V's company name, because it's not about that. It's about Gary V. Why is that become so important now? Well, it's interesting. Cult of celebrity has always been a big deal. We've been so using celebrities to sell products and make brands since the beginning of time. I think social media has made it more accessible to, to create celebrity brands and celebrity, yep. celebrity brands. Yep. And the reason why, and first of all, before Richard Branson took over Virgin, the original Virgin brand was very, very strong. When you mm. had Virgin Megastore, when you had Virgin Airlines, and mm. first guys is very hip very kind of cheeky disruptor in the marketplace. Yeah. That was really fun and cool. I think way more than just attaching it to Richard Branson, I think. And then mm. the company got lazy and which is like, let's attach it to Branson. Yeah. Interestingly, Apple never did that with Stephen Jobs. Mm. Yeah, they good point. Apple brand, smartly so, and they didn't mm. just attach it to him. But that, that comes with the price tag. That, that brand spends over a billion dollars a year, a billion on media and has. Wow, wow. So it's not inexpensive to, yeah. to build it, but you, know, you, get a lot of, you get a lot of returns. So I think a shortcut for a lot of people is to peg it to a celebrity. It could be a TikTok celebrity. It could be anyone. Yeah. Yep. The downside of celebrity branding has always been if something goes wrong with that person, yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, some some negative press you're associated yeah. with that. Right. Or if that person dies and goes away, Stephen Jobs, for example, then what? Yeah. And so we often talk about building brands that are very sustainable. American Express is yep. American Express. It doesn't matter who the head of the company is. It doesn't matter even what the products are. Yeah. You yeah. know, you're always going to rely on that brand and the relationship is with that brand. That's why Warren Buffett says there's two things that he looks at in investing in a company. One is low cost of manufacturing and two is do they have a powerful brand? Mm, I think I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. That's very you interesting. Brand, you can, you can, you have the trust. So uh, to, to your answer, it comes down to trust. Yes. When people develop a trusted relationship with the brand because they see the marketing and the promises and the products mm. over and over again. And it comes to something they can rely on and depend on. And it's meaningful to them. They have a yes. relationship with it. Similar with celebrities or TikTok celebrities or social celebrities. They trust that person. That person seems authentic. Yes. And then they just, okay, well, if Howard Stern says I should do it, I'm going to do it. Absolutely. Well, it's, 
it's really interesting you talk about the, the power of trust when it comes to brand. And I use this as a sales technique. I'll give an example. I don't know if you remember, there, there used to be a saying in sort of the 90s of um, no one got fired for buying IBM. Do you remember that saying? Of course. And yeah. yeah, right. Because trust, we trust the brand. So a lot of companies I work with, all different sizes. I'll, I'll take an example. There's a, a global recruitment company called ProMan that you may not have heard of because although they're global, they're not an IBM, right? They're not a, um, I can't think of a massive recruitment business, but, but a Gecko, let's say. However, one of their clients is Amazon. They recruit for Amazon. So when, when a prospect says to ProMan, listen, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I've never heard of you. My rebuttal to that is say, well, that, that's fair. Amazon never heard of us seven years ago before we started working with them. And immediately, trust is built on that statement. So I think whenever you, as a company or as a salesperson, if they don't have a great brand, like you said earlier, Jake, not all companies have great brands. They're not, you know, well, not reputable or, or they don't have a well-known brand. As long as you've got a client that has a well-known brand, you can leverage that. Does that make sense? That's absolutely. I think it's really important for branding to have what I call credibility. Yeah. Now, credibility can come from name dropping a well-known client, Amazon. Yeah. Credibility can come from other things too. For instance, you could say, well, I'm a Range Rover. I'm a great off-road vehicle because I can, you can drive this vehicle 4,000 contiguous miles. Yes. I have a problem. Here. Oh, now that's credibility. Mm. Mm. So you can have claims related to your product. I always say to people, have something that is, um, you know, extreme. Yeah. You know, we have 450 peanuts in my product versus two that the other one has. Oh. Yeah. Brilliant. Right? Yeah. Or so Amazon, where it's one of the biggest companies in the world. So if you don't have a big brand, you know, you can even just say, you know, our people work harder. They work 60 hours a week when the other people work 40. Our phones are on 24 hours a day when, you know. It can be yeah. whatever it might be, which is your differentiators, which are extreme and meaningful to the client. But yeah. Your credibility is very important. I love credibility. I still think it should build to a distinct brand identity, a creatively distinct. Yeah. I call it the enchanted brand because you're trying to enchant somebody. Yes. Yes. I love that name. I, the name of your book. I, I think it's very, very clever. You're, Just you're before... a sales expert. You're a sales expert. Aren't the greatest sales the ones that are enchanting? Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more. And thank you for the nice compliment. But yeah, I couldn't agree more. So before we talk about your book, I want to I want to know a bit more about the enchanted ground. For salespeople that are listening to this call, that this podcast, where they work for a company that doesn't focus much on brand identity, i.e., maybe they don't have big marketing budgets or PR budgets, should they be creating their own personal brand? where it's all about them on their Insta, you know, on their Insta um, profile or TikTok profile and LinkedIn profile, or should it be about the company they represent? I think it's a personal choice. If it were, if it were me, I would say do it for the company. I think it's difficult for people to expose themselves and I think it can be risky. And I also think a lot of people are introverted and uncomfortable with it. Mm. I've spoken to a lot of executives like, I don't want to be on social media. I'm like, it's okay. Mm, it's mm, okay you don't have to mm, be you don't have to put yourself out there so mm, but something if it's not you create a brand you can create a brand look i'm a terrible interior designer but i have friends who are good at it yeah I have, absolutely I don't, I don't have a big budget so i have my friends come over i mean i'm not a comedian but i have friends who are funny people i don't try to be funny i bring the funny people to my party i let them yeah. do so you might have a friend who's got a talent for branding or, or, or good at ideas, who has a sense of poetry, who can step back and say, you know what your business is really about? It's about X. Yes. And, and give you that high level. And then that's a platform you can always return to. You know, when yes. I'm making my cell say, listen, I, to I told you that I have my, my tick repellent is a thousand times better in the competitors and my insects. Yeah. But ultimately, you, you know, Tony, that it's going to be fantastic when your children are safe playing outside. Yeah, absolutely. So and you're really you on yeah. me for. That's what you can Correct. rely on me for. That's really that's when you're infusing the brand in your cell. Or yeah. Tony, now that you have my computer products, you're going to be able to be 
I know you're not a creative guy, but you're really going to be creative. Your inner creative yeah. is going to come out because I'm going to make it really easy for you to do everything from create logos to write songs, to listen to songs, yeah. to edit movies, and you're going to have a great time doing it. Yeah, I love that. It's very, very good way of looking at it. So one question I've got is I've got a couple of clients that are, are quite wealthy. They, they run a business. Let's say one of my clients works, sells um, investment products, right? Not property. But how to become a how to become but let's say a trader how to become a trader now the, the gentleman who owns the company although his name's not in the brand his company is the brand but his Instagram he has over a hundred thousand followers and all of his pictures that he puts on there are him driving his his Lamborghini or drinking the best whiskey bars in London or going out to the best restaurants and because he's created this profile this persona that he's a multi-millionaire which a lot of that whether he is or he isn't is irrelevant here it creates that perception and that's what people who are thinking about becoming an investor a trader online want to be like him so he generates about 50 leads a day for his sales team to call and he generates those leads it doesn't cost him a penny of marketing he does it through this so my, my question to you is I live quite a nice lifestyle. I'm not saying I drive a Lamborghini, but I've had a sports car. I live in a, a two million pound house. I don't want to show off like that though, because I don't want to look like, for me, you look like a bit of a tool. Like, I, I think it's ostentatious and I wouldn't want to do that. Yet I want to show that I'm successful for my clients to trust me. So how do I do it? Do you feel what I mean? How do I try and achieve what my client is without looking like a tool? You know, it's really interesting. So, look, I, I, I don't, I, I, that, that kind of model of let me show you this aspirational thing that you want to be, and then you'll do what I want is, is kind of like the oldest model in the book. Mm -hmm. There's ups and downsides to it. It should, darn well should be authentic because the minute yeah. it's not, it could be crashing down in a very ugly way. Yes. Um, but I don't really feel, even though I'm, I'm sure that's working for him, I don't really feel that resonates with modern times. I think people, particularly mm. in a post pandemic world are looking for something that's going to give them what they want out of their life. And it's not necessarily some flashy aspirational lifestyle. Cause a lot of people believe, I don't care what you tell me. I'm no, I'm not going to get it. Yes. Yes. So, um, so tell but me I, something that I can't believe in. But I think when you look at like Jordan Belfort, a wolf for wall street, that sure. he's that sort of persona, right? And so many people are, I want what he's got. That's, that's right. The, I mean, that's a very 1980s, very it right. It is. Although, uh, he's a, although the truth is, he's a fool stuff. That's Whether right. you like it or not, he defrauded right. people out of their, their, their life savings. And you can do that. I mean, it's a very easy model to follow. As you're saying, your client does that model. It's, it's not hard to do. It's not necessarily unique, but that's yeah. same. That's same. There's also, as you know, in sales, there's certain things that you can always do that yeah. you can always get certain, everybody to do. So I'm not going to say that's not uh, successful. I'm just saying there are other ways to go for people who yes. don't want to do that. Yeah, and that's people fair. People who don't want to do that, what I feel resonates today is to be very authentic as people are looking for a path forward in a very yes. uncertain and ambiguous world. Yeah. And they're looking for experts like you. I always tell people like, there's a coach for that. You know, the expression, there's yes. an app for that. There's a yes. coach for that. Get yourself a coach. And, yeah. and, you know, you can be that coach, which is what do they want? They want to know that you're going to get them. Like, I yes. need to understand you. And I need to understand your dreams and, and, you know, what you're willing to do for those dreams and not willing to do for those mm. dreams, what you really want. Mm. And then I'm going to help you connect to the people because life is about fit. Yep. I'm going to help you connect to the kind of clients that are going to want what you're giving and, and make your dreams come true. That's a mm. very, that's a very specific, that is the road to success. Mm. People will want that mm. because they don't want to dress up and pretend that there's something they're not. Yes. And things, And then before you know it, five or six years from now it crashes and where are you? Yeah, yeah, totally. Now, really good advice. So tell me about the, your motivation or inspiration for the Enchanted Brand, the, the book you wrote. Tell me where that came from. Well, it really came from my sense that in, in, a, in a, what they call a VUCA, a volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous world, 
that we're living in a time that we've never lived in before. It's very hard for people to realize it because we're in it. Yeah. But when something shocking happens every week, there's a level of disruption that happened to people and also pace of change is too quick. Mm -hmm. And there was a, a very ch famous Chinese philosopher who said that the, the, the illness of the 20th century was cancer because the world changed faster than the body could adapt to. Mm -hmm. The body got sick. It was too fast. He said the, mm -hmm. the illness of the 21st century will be insanity. Wow. People will not be able to adapt to just the level of disruptive upside downness that's out there. And I believe it. And I see it I, happening. And I think I that's a that. really good point. Well, that, uh, mental health, which I suppose mm -hmm. you say is insanity, is, is really talked about now, right? Because mm -hmm. of how people have tried to cope with this unprecedented change in everyone's world. Un unprecedented change. I mean, you, know, you can create a baby without having intercourse. <laughs> yeah. If something as simple as that to to more disruptive things like mass shooting or space tourism, it's like you, you do, people yeah. get a, a sense of being unmoored. Yeah. And then and the rise of conspiracy theory I talk about in the book, because when people don't know how to explain something, they make things up. That's the mm. kind of the fruit of mythology, ancient mm. mythology, mm. creating, you know, things and stories to explain things that you don't understand. We have conspiracy theories. We don't even need facts. We just create, a, we create enough facts to help us understand it. Yes. And then we convince other people to understand it. And at least we can understand it. Therefore, mm. we can believe it. So it's kind of creates a very uh, unsettling world. Mm. And I believe that brands can be the antithesis of that because brands surround us all day long. They're in our culture and they're permeating our lives and they're telling us mm. what's important. Mm. So you mentioned Jordan Belfort. I lived in the 1980s. I knew what was important. It was yeah. a boom time. It was all about Wall Street and excess yeah. and bigness. And that's what you knew was important. Everything in the culture told you that. Brands reified that. And that's how words went on. I think brands need to give people are very vulnerable right now. Mm. They don't know what to believe. It's a mm. world they don't understand. And I think brands can be very helpful. Mm. Whether it's brands like an Apple or a brand like a Nike, there are brands that help you say, listen, don't be worried about the world that's right in front of you. Think about yes. the world you want to create. Yes. My brand is about ignite the imagination. What do you really want, Tony? What do you want in the world? My brand and the products my brand represents will help you get there. That's amazing. I love that. Great, Jane. I've really enjoyed this conversation. I know my audience is going to absolutely love it. Where's the best place for them to learn more about you? reach out to you if, if they need help with branding identity and strategy sure um my company is called brightmarkconsulting.com that's where you can find me b-r-i-g-h-t brightmarkconsulting.com the book is called the enchanted brand you can find it on amazon or you can go to the enchantedbrand.com and learn more about it there awesome jane thank you so much for your time thoroughly enjoyed this it's given me real food for thought when it comes to my brand so uh, thank you, Tony. Thank you, and I'm I'm just delighted, and um, I'm a big fan of branding, helping people who are selling. It's it can be yeah. really an amplifier and accelerator. So I'm delighted to have the opportunity to share what I know. Well, thank you. Thanks, Jane. Keep safe. Keep well. Thank you.